Uh, another another hotbed topic about shared shared sex places, you know, when it comes to uh, victims of abuse and stuff like that. But it seems that a human rights watchdog has published a single sex spaces guide. Uh, LGBT correspondent. What, what a job title. Being gay, huh? Is there money in that? depends. Uh, services such as bathrooms and domestic abuse refuges can be single sex in certain circumstances. Wow, how nice of you. How nice of you to let these businesses do what they want. Uh, Britain's human rights body has said in new guidance. However, the guidance from the Equality and Human Rights Commission says such services should be open to trans people wherever possible. Exceptions are only acceptable if there are proportionate and justified reasons. And there it is with we're in the fucking, like, third paragraph, and here we are, the grey area. Here it is. Proportionate and justified reasons. Well, who decides if it is a proportionate or justified reason? The government. The government watchdog, right? See, the watchdog, it will be a government body, right? Which means it's an extension of the government, so it's going to look out for the interests of the government. And this is the problem when you make the government the sole judge, jury, and executioner of all conflicts, even those involving itself. Because when you have that type of monopoly, then you can just literally always rule in your favour. That's why the government is desperate to hold on to the monopoly for this. The new guidance is an interpretation of existing equality laws. It looks at how single-sex services, such as bathrooms and domestic abuse refugees, should be run and transgender people's access to these spaces. Under the Equality Act of 2010, providers cannot exclude someone based on sex or gender reassignment, but for the first time, the AHRC has produced guidance where there can be exceptions in certain circumstances. There must be a legitimate aim to do so, and again, who decides if it's legitimate? The government. Uh, and would apply whether or not the person has a gender recognition certificate, a legal document that allows someone to change the legal sex on their birth certificate. It is the first time the AHRC has published guidance of this kind. The guide covers England, Scotland and Wales. One example the watchdog has given about domestic abuse refugees suggesting trans women should be barred if biologically female survivors indicated they felt uncomfortable, which is something that has actually happened a lot. But a list of alternative support for trans women in the local area should be made available. And that's something I've said from the get-go. Basically make a space then for trans people. That's There you go. Problem bloody solved. Uh, similarly, in a gym with separate sex changing rooms, if there was concern over the safety and dignity of trans men in a communal area, an extra gender neutral tra uh, changing room with private units could be introduced. There we go. Right, there's the third toilet. If businesses want to, the thing is, businesses should not be forced to do that. But if businesses want to do that, then there you go, that's fine. Everybody has their own little space, everybody gets to feel special and all that, and there you are, conf conflict avoided. Uh, announcing the guidance, the EHRC were keen to clarify they were not addressing the wider debate on sex and gender identity, and that their guidelines are intended to help service providers interpret existing equ equality law. Uh, Baroness uh, Kishwar Faulkner, a chair of the EHRC, says she thinks the advice will help uphold everyone's rights. She says there is no place for discrimination against anyone based on their sex or gender reassignment. Organisations are legally allowed to restrict services to a single sex in some circumstances, in which circumstances the government gets to decide, but they need help to navigate this sensitive area. That is why we have published this guidance to clarify the law and uphold everyone's rights. But the response from charities and campaigners suggests the rules could still be open to interpretation. Well, of course they are. It's a fucking grey area. The government puts those in there on purpose. LGBT plus campaigning charity Stonewall, of course they fucking reared their bloody ugly heads, uh, has criticised the announcement, claiming it will lead to more confusion. A Stonewall spokesperson said, far from clarifying how the single sex exemptions in the Equality Act should be used, the AHRC's latest non-statutory guidance is likely to create more confusion. Uh, Stonewall, by the way, is a company that claims to be fighting for rights while trampling on the rights of others. So they're, they're not a human rights organisation by any metric. They are for the rights of a of their specific group of their specific tribe and they will trample on the rights of everyone else in order to give their group a place of supremacy as, among the social hierarchy they don't want them just to also have rights they want them to have privilege and they want to take the rights and privileges away of other people so stonewall as a group are dangerous they're anti-human rights 
Uh, it appears to go against the core presumption of the act, which is that inclusion should be the starting point and shifts the focus towards reason, uh, reasons trans people, and specifically trans women, can be excluded. While gender-critical organisation Sex Matters has welcomed the move and called it a straightforward explanation, which, yeah, if it's a case of women in a shelter don't want to be around like trans people because they see them as men, make a separate area for trans women. Problem is solved. Problem is solved. Everyone has their own space. There's now no conflict. Uh, Maya Forstater, uh, Executive Director of Sex Matters, said the EHRC's straightforward explanation should help service providers avoid the difficulties currently plaguing politicians when they are asked questions about the difference between sex and gender identity. The guidance has been released following the news that the EHRC's status as an A-class human rights institution is to be reviewed later this year. There had been calls from some LGBT plus campaign groups and charities for a special review after accusations they were influenced by the UK government and the appointments of the chair and board members. <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, they're, they're an arm of the government. Uh, the EHRC previously told the BBC it takes all decisions impartially and all appointments made through fair, open and transparent recruitment process, you know. Yeah, the government's always fair, open and transparent. Uh, however, the BBC understands calls for a special review were rejected by the UN and instead a pre-planned review, which was already scheduled for later this year, will go ahead. Evidence submitted by campaigners will be heard as part of the review and other interested groups will be invited to submit evidence as early as next week. If a review does find that they should be downgraded, the EHRC will be prevented from being able to make representations at the UN Human Rights Council or its committees on human rights. Okay, now, one thing that, say, the, the whole like gender-neutral bathrooms and all this other type of shit right now, People want to feel comfortable whenever they go out, right? I understand that. That's not even just like a trans exclusive thing. That's male, female, that's bloody everybody. Everybody wants to feel comfortable whenever they go out. And there's certain situations that are already a little bit uncomfortable. Like for example, public bathrooms. It's already an uncomfortable situation. Uh, one thing that I have actually started doing is I always go into a, uh, I don't pee at the urinals anymore. And the reason that I do, I always go into one of the stalls, even if I just need to do a pee. And the reason that I do that is because I've been at a bunch of events that I've done with Sargon or live comedy, and people have tried to look at my dick. Like, and not really, like, hiding it very well. People have been trying to look at my dick, right? So, that's an uncomfortable situation. However, I'm a man, I'm going to use the man's toilet, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the stall, right? It's an uncomfortable situation, and that's how I deal with it. Uh, for example, some people might be a little bit uncomfortable if there's a woman peeing. For example, I don't want to pee in front of a woman, right? I'm not talking about trans or anything like a woman. Like, if there's gender-neutral bathrooms, I kind of I kind of feel, right, it's just me, right? I would feel a little bit weird if I'm peeing and, like, a 10-year-old girl walked in the room. I'm sorry. To me, that's fucking weird. That's really fucking weird, and I don't like that, right? I, I never want to find myself in that situation. So... Would I use a gender-neutral bathroom? No. No, I would not, right? It makes me feel uncomfortable. So, however, if you have male, female, gender-neutral, there you are. There's all the choices. Everyone has their own little choice. You know, most, like, trans people or anyone with all those weird genders will most likely use the gender-neutral bathroom. So, that means the majority of people who are using that bathroom have an understanding of, you know, each other and blah, 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 and all that stuff. So, they're cool with it. They're fine with it. That's fine. Everyone has their own space and the conflict has been avoided, right? That's, however, the problem is that some shops or places are very small and can't introduce a third bathroom. Maybe they could. Actually, yeah, you can make some bathrooms pretty fucking small. Wouldn't be able to have a whole bathroom, it would just be a wee single room like they do with the disabled toilets. But hey-ho, we're getting into fucking pedantics, pedantics and semantics. But when it comes to refugees, right, refugees are a very, very different thing, right? So, for example, if a woman has gone to a women's refuge, she most likely has suffered some kind of abuse, and you can get some basic abuse where it might just be verbal and mental, all the way up to the horrendous shit where it's physical and some, in some cases sexual. So women need to have a place to go so they have some place to live because they might not be able to rely on family or anything like that, so they go to a women's refuge. Now, this woman has just gone through a very awful experience at the hands of a man. So that woman kind of does not want to be around men. And 
Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. That's fine. You know, it's like the kid that gets bitten by a dog when he's younger, so he grows up with a permanent fear of dogs. You know, like that type of shit. I get why that woman doesn't want to be around men. Now, as far as the trans argument goes, people can turn around and say, no, you're, it doesn't matter if you put tits on yourself and wear a dress, you're still a man and everything like that. Or, yes, I see you and I recognise your identity. I will call you she, her, and all that other type of stuff as well. Now, not everyone you know, falls into either of those categories, you're going to get a mix. Maybe half the women at the shelter recognise the woman as a trans woman, the trans woman as a woman. Maybe the other half are going to do the whole shit of going, nope, that is a man in a dress, and I do not want to be around men. I'm in a woman's refuge to get away from men. Now, the key here should be, if you want them to change their mind, is to have a respectful discussion with them. What you don't do, as groups like Stonewall, etc., have all been doing, is just said, tough shit, here you go, this is what's happening, don't like it, don't care. Right? Because that, you know, you know when I say that force uh, very often gets met with resistance? Yeah, that, that type of shit, that has the fucking opposite effect. That, that, in fact, makes the women a lot more angrier, makes them a bit more vocal, and it makes them a lot more scared, especially having something like that forced upon them, you know, because uh, they're in the women's refuge to get away from someone who was doing that to them. So, another way to completely solve the conflict is here is a man's refuge, because there's, well, sorry, there's like almost none of those. Here is the women's refuge, and here is the gender-neutral refuge. There you go. Everyone has their own space, right? Everyone has their own space, right? You need to accept that there's some spaces that you're not fucking allowed in, right? I'm not allowed in the women's toilets, right? Because I'm a fucking man, right? Even if I doll myself up in a dress, I, I, I'd, I'd make a fucking ugly woman, right? I, I would understand if I wasn't allowed in there. There's space, there's, you just have to accept there's some spaces that you're not allowed in, right? That's, that's just the way things are, right? Sorry, tough shit, there's some spaces you're not allowed in. However, if we have the, the men's, the women's, and the gender neutral, boom, there you go. Everyone has their own space now. Everyone has their own little, you know, pocket of safety. And there you are, conflict avoided, right? This is the sensible way to go about it. But all the, all the fucking advocacy groups, all they're seeing is, oh, we're being excluded. And it's like, well, no, you're being given your own space. We are catering to your need, right? By saying, like, I need a refuge to get away from somewhere. Okay, here is your refuge. Here is your refuge. Here is your toilet. Here are your things. You have them now. No, I want to be in their toilet. I want to be in their refuge. That's when it's like, okay, so the refuge and the toilet wasn't the point then. That wasn't the point then. Because you've been given those, right? You've been given those and obviously that wasn't the point then. Your point was you want to be in a certain space. It wasn't the service. It wasn't the ease. It wasn't, you know, the, the luxury or the privilege or whatever, right? You wanted to be in that space, Right, it wasn't about a service. It was you wanted to be in a space, and I'm sorry, but when it comes to certain spaces, that that's not a right. That that's not a right. Okay, that's just you wanting. Basically, it's like forcing the other kids to play with you. Right, some of the kids might not like you, and they don't want to play with you. But in this case, you're forcing them, which is just going to make them hate you even more. <laughs>